Welcome to Breaking It All Down. I'm Count Zero. <sighs> Sorry for not getting your video out last week. I was busy with schoolwork and stuff, but this week we have plenty of material to talk about. An embarrassment of, wit of riches, if you will. This week, I'm going to start off with discussion of the new character reveal for um, Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Specifically, we got a reveal of one new character from a Namco franchise, and one new character from a Capcom franchise. From Namco, we got Pac-Man, which is okay. Um, well, Namco is the house that Pac-Man built. And for Capcom, we got Mega Man. However, we don't have the usual Mega Man. Here we have, well, the Mega Man from the box art for Mega Man 1 on the NES, the US version, who looks like this. As opposed to the traditional look of Mega Man, the Blue Bomber, as he's commonly known, which looks like this. As you can imagine, there are some fans of the Mega Man franchise who are upset about this, and justifiably so. This isn't the Mega Man that they grew up with. This is not the traditional look of Mega Man. This is not the Mega Man that, they've, that they're familiar with and which they've come to know and love as a character. This is a Americanized. This is a terrible Americanized version of a character made in a time when Japanese characters on or Japanese box art was getting Americanized by artists who knew nothing about the games in question to basically deal with a whole bunch of racism in the marketplace against Japan due to America's kind of depression at the time depression slash recession of the time of the late 80s, early 90s, and Japan's bubble economy. So, I understand why people be upset about this. It doesn't help that it's, it is entirely likely this is the last we will ever see of Mega Man, as Kenji Inafune, the creator of Mega Man, and basically the series' longtime champion at Capcom, has been ousted due to his repeated statements that... Japanese game development honestly needs to get with the program and start modernizing and adapting to a world economy rather than just focusing on the Japanese marketplace, which is slowly becoming more and more kind of insular. So I can't blame Inafune for saying what, he, saying what he's been saying. He's in the right, honestly. And Capcom's move here is a dick move. They are giving the middle finger to... American Cap uh, Mega Man fans, and if this character shows up in the Japanese version of the game, to Japanese fans as well. In fact, I'd say he's tossing a double middle finger to Japanese fans if he shows up in that version. Because there you can't even say, oh, it's just a little in-joke and based on our common history of the franchise. Here, there it's just being an asshole. So, I'm disappointed by Capcom on all this. I would like to see m more Mega Man stuff, real Mega Man stuff in the future. But I don't know if that day will ever come. The other thing that came up recently is a big Twitter, Twitter debate that was started by um, Gabe of Penny Arcade about used games. This whole thing's kind of started up after three news articles, well, one rumor, two actual news articles. One is, one, the first news article related to uh, Final Fantasy 13 2, which revealed that there would be a second basically ending, or the real ending to the game, was going to be released as DLC. And this would tie into a planned um, Final Fantasy 13 3, which Capcom is already, um, oh, the Capcom Screen Inks is already kind of working on. The second bit related to Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, which, according to the rumors, would have additional single-player content on disc that was going to be locked. And if you purchased the game new, you would get access to this content. But if you got it used, you would have to pay to get access to that content through something similar to EA, basically the extension of EA's Project $10 program. Finally, there was the rumor that the supposed new Xbox that Microsoft is working on, the Xbox 720, 
was going to be designed to prevent people from playing used games on the system. All of these things kind of went over like lead balloons. The worst of them being the Kingdoms of Amalur rumor and the Xbox story. Basically because this was much more of a direct attack against people who basically either by, necess basically by necessity have to play are playing used games. Game developers for the past few years have been basically trying to fight a sort of war against the used game market, particularly since the rise of GameStop, which has managed to get a great deal of financial success primarily focused on the sale of used video games. I mean, for used video games, they get 100% profit, essentially, whereas for new games, the game developers have to get their cut back. And the argument is, from the people who are anti-used games, that used game publishers should get their cut and that GameStop shouldn't be hogging the show. The anti-used game argument is, which I rather the pro-used game argument, which I support, is threefold. One, used games preserve the history of gaming, preserve our common history. Everything from Mega Man to Mario to Daikatana to Duke Nukem Forever, all of it, from the high points to the low points, used games help preserve this so we can learn from our mistakes and revel in our successes. And we can show future generations what it was that we liked about old generations of games and hopefully so they can appreciate it in the future and implement that and common stuff like that in future games. That is the iconic sort of element that, that is a, a big part of it. The other parts are more demographic, financial demographic related. Um, basically, how everyone can afford to buy new games? Or if they can get new games, they can't always necessarily get the new game they want right when it comes out. Thus, <clears throat> a limited print run game, like the ones from Xseed or Atlas, could quite possibly be completely sold out by the time someone who wants to get it but didn't have the money at the time has managed to get the money together. Similarly, a lot of people, they simply just can't, don't have the opportunity or just don't have the funds at all to buy lots of new games. If they're lucky, they might only be able to buy a couple new games a year. Thus, purchasing used games is their only option if they really want to play the major titles. And even then, they might end up getting these games a year or two late, to, so after everyone else has played them. And so used games allow them to play those, be able to afford to play those games, and also kind of forces the game publishers to be honest in their um, pricing for new games because now they're competing against themselves. They're not just competing against other titles in the marketplace where everyone's all setting a price point of 60 bucks in unofficial collusion, but instead they go, okay, lots of people are trading in this game. A used copy of this game goes for 20 bucks now, maybe we should lower the price of the game to something close to that, and possibly even send out a Game of the Year edition or Greatest Hits edition of the game, which incorporates, say, some of the DLC or expansions we've included for the game to get people to buy it more often. Some great examples of this are with the Diablo and Warcraft and Starcraft Battle Chest editions, as well as stuff like the um, recent Game of the Year edition or Greatest Hits edition of Borderlands, which incorporated all of the DLC from that game, uh, from Mad Moxie's Underground Riot, um, uh, uh, Crackbot, Crackbot the Rivers, a New Robot Revolution, and so on. So, honestly, who's in the right on this? I'd say it's the pro-used games people. Ultimately, the anti-used game argument... It sums up to one thing. One thing with an unfortunate 
with a bunch of unfortunate implications behind it. The anti-use game argument is GameStop sucks because they rip off customers and they charge excessive amounts of money for used games and they don't give people who trade them in a run for their money. Therefore, games, therefore, developers and publishers are going to kick back on used games. The problem is they never say from GameStop. They say in general, which involves changing the laws and that sorts of thing. Stuff which would be a logistical nightmare to implement in the first place and difficult to enforce. And would even more hurt more in the few remaining independent game stores as opposed to the monolith colossus that is GameStop. So there's that. And there's the other problem. And that's the unfortunate implications. Is there's one thing to go fuck GameStop. There's lots of reasons to say fuck game to say fuck GameStop. They treat their employees terribly. They take used take new games, resell them as used. They um, they are not necessarily good about filling pre-orders. They shut out um, independent game stores from pre-order exclusives. I could go on about all the problems that GameStop has that hurts independent consumers. But the fact of the matter is this. To attack and to, and to take out used games because of GameStop is throwing the baby out with the bath, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. It hurts the independent game stores more, and it hurts, in particular, the poor gamers more. You say, say fuck GameStop all you want. Start going fuck used games, you're also going fuck the poor. It's what you're doing. Whether you really deliberately intend that part of your message or not, it's what you're saying. So, because of this, the problem is, with all of this stuff, is it's hurting... I mean, I don't think people really get that poor people play video games. Video games is not the rich person's hobby anymore. Video games is not the rich person's entertainment anymore. I mean, and honestly, it never was. It really never was. As soon as we hit console generation number two, when, I mean, there were the guys whose parents bought them the Master System instead of the NES, and couldn't get them to buy the other parents to buy the other system. So those were the people who were primarily Master System players. Um, there were people who only necessarily bought, could get one new game every couple of months, maybe, if not less, if not longer, and thus had to rent a lot of games. The people now who still rely on Gamefly or if they are lucky enough to have a Blockbuster near them, rent them games from Blockbuster or Redbox or whatever over buying new games every month. Like me! <clears throat> so, there are good reasons to be upset. There are really good reasons to be upset here about all of this. And for, for the used game fan. And it doesn't help to get rumors of stuff like the Xbox 720, not working with used games, ever. And Kingdom of Ambler locking away content on the disc for uh, if, if you purchased it used, as opposed to having a season pass with ongoing downloadable content, as with earlier games. So there's reason to be upset. And particularly, reason to be upset that we're, that, frankly, the 1% is ignoring the 99% here. The fuck GameStop stuff, that's getting mad at the nine, that's getting mad at the 1%. That's fine. But honestly, the majority of gamers, not the ones who are like active online and going, "Oh, used games are terrible. You shouldn't buy used games." Those are usually not the people who have to who've had to trade in a bunch of games to buy one new one. If they're able, uh, or have saved up a bunch of money to buy one new one, or used um, pre-order as a layaway, so they can buy one new game over time over the course of several months, knowing in advance what that one game is. 
So I think and so I think there's a large number of people who have been kind of getting left in the lurch in this discussion. Either because they haven't been paying attention or just because they've been being ignored. And I think that the the being ignored option is the bigger one. Because when Gabe started this whole thing, Gabe Opinion Arcade started this with a Twitter th- debate under the hashtag used versus new. When I was listening to the discussion, the part that people were paying attention to was... GameStop was archiving our history and that was pretty much it when the topic of you know there are people who simply cannot afford to purchase new games at all or if they can it's very, over, it's very rarely and I often have to trade in a bunch of new games to do it Whenever that bit comes up, it kind of got ignored. The used game people spent much more time on the defensive rather than the new game people trying to kind of recognize this side of the point, the side of the debate. And I think we need to do something about this. Unfortunately, I don't have the money to go to E3, go out into California around E3. I don't really have the contacts to to start this on the down low. But honestly, what I'm about to suggest is something that shouldn't start on the down low. This should be big. There should be a lot of people talking about this online, ideally. And we need to start talking about this now because we want to plan this in advance. What I'd like to do is this. Aside from drink water. What we need to do, we being the people who are the 99% here, who play used game, who want to support our game developers, but who want to do, but who have to get used games because we're in tough times. We want to buy used, want to buy new games, but maybe what we have to do is get the used games and then buy quality DLC to extend the life of our games, or or are willing to pay for an online pass. For new content, but not have to unlock stuff on the disc, single player stuff on the disc, just because we purchased the game used. What we need to do is we need to make our voice known at E3. Even if the Xbox 720 isn't announced at E3, even if it's announced and they don't talk about a used game lockout at E3, we need to make our voice known and say, when the new console cycle starts, remember us. We will be there. We will be watching. And if we are left out, if we get screwed, we will make our voices known again. And if necessary, hurt you in your pocketbook. I'm saying we should occupy E3. Not break the law, not start a campground in front of the convention center. I'm saying, I mean, it's four days. And the convention center is on a major street. It has some very big open areas in front of it that they use for events and that sort of thing. I'm saying there should be pickets. There should be protests. For several reasons. There's the used game thing. There's still the whole matter that the ESA basically only backed out of support of Sopa and Pipa after the battle was already lost. So, we still need to keep an eye on them and let them know that we're going to be watching them on the digital right, on the, uh, on that front as well. So, all the more reason to basically occupy E3 to protest, to make our voices known, and let the game industry know that used that that used game stuff is bigger than GameStop. And if you want to hurt if you want your money from GameStop for used game sales, from GameStop specifically, then make the focus GameStop. Say GameStop in your press releases. Don't just say, oh we should be getting a cutoff of all used game sales. Say we should be getting kickbacks from GameStop. Something like that. 
don't fuck over the 99% while you're rolling in your Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 money. And also, because the, guy who, because the guys who started this whole debate are Gabe and Tycho, both of whom have come out in, in, in the anti-used game camp, in columns on their webpage, and after a day of discussion under the used versus new hashtag, their Tycho, Tycho being anti-used game on the, on the site, Gabe going to agree to disagree with the anti-used game crowd on the uh, on Twitter. The thing is, when they got started, they, they used to be... We all like to think they're one of us, and they were. They, they talk about, when they did their podcast stuff, that basically when Penny Arcade really got started, they were unemployed. Or at least were working nine to five, not very good jobs, while they were doing the comic. And I can understand. And they basically have achieved almost superstardom, and more power to them. But and this is a big but. I think they've lost track of this, of that, of that early part. Because I'm not going to say with certainty, oh, they only bought used games back then. Well, they probably did buy a bunch of used games due to financial necessity. And by coming down against used games, I think they're missing out on the people who are le- who are now like they were then. Who don't have necessarily have the option, particularly in these tough financial times, to buy games new so- that often. And I think there really needs to be a better way of doing this. If they want to be the voice of the gamer, then they got to be, well, account- accountable to the 99%. So I think perhaps we should also occupy Penny Arcade Expo. Again, don't break the law. I'm not talking about breaking the law, I'm not talking about camping out at the convention center. I'm saying... Maybe pickets to get a in protest to get the point across. And you know what? If we can get some really good um, advocates for used games, some people who can express themselves really well in a debate, which I admit I'm not great at. Um, maybe somebody like Seamus Young to go and. Well, basically just do an actual pe- debate about the used game thing with somebody speaking from the 99%'s point of view, from the lower income gamer's point of view, and basically to get them to say, we're not against you, and we're not against used games, we're against GameStop, and to get them to recognize that and to at least change their tack to, all right, we want to get ours from GameStop. We're not against the independent game retailer. We're not against you, and we should do. And whatever tack we take should be done in a fashion that won't hurt the independent games retailer and won't hurt the won't hurt the lower income gamer. I don't know if they'll accept this panel idea. And even if we call out, even if they can get a panel on this, even if we call out Gabe or Tycho, I can't be certain that they'll show up. But, we have to try. If nothing else, we have to try. I do hope that this leads to something. I do hope that what I'm saying here will lead to maybe pro- maybe protests, maybe a bunch of internet blogs, but I would rather that the sound and fury actually means something. We as gamers and users of technology and so forth and so on showed in our fight against SOPA and PIPA what we can do. And we didn't do it alone. We had groups like the EFF and Google and Yahoo on our side. 
and we need to try and do this again. So we need to try and prove to the gaming world that Soap One Pipa wasn't a one-time thing. That we're going to be politically active now. We're going to advocate for ourselves now. And we can't be silenced. Just my two bits. Next time is going to be another video game review time. Or the video game more focused game specific post. I'm going to try and get a review of the game El Shaddai, Ascension of the Metatron up by then. If not, that's okay. I'll try to get some Let's Play stuff done as well. I, we'll see how this goes. Until next time, I'm Count Zero. I'd like to thank you for watching.